Hello and welcome to a brief tutorial describing the data displayed in the Wisconsin DNR's Private Forest Lands Open for Public Recreation web mapping tool. When the web page first starts, a data disclaimer and terms of use appear. It's a good idea to read and understand how the open lands are displayed in the application before using this system. Remember, it's your responsibility to avoid any trespass situation, so use all the information presented here as well as any supplemental information from the landowner or area forester if you are unsure about using the property. Scroll down to get a good introduction as to how the website displays the location of open tax law lands. As you will see in the example I'm about to show you, you need to read and understand all the data presented to you and be aware of the land uses surrounding the parcel that you plan to recreate on. This will ensure you have an enjoyable experience while recreating on open tax law land. After accepting the terms of use, a quick tutorial on how to use the application appears. It's as easy as 1, 2, 3, 4. If you forget what you're doing, we also have a link to the online help at the top of the screen. In this example, I'm going to use the search tool to jump to a legal description that I'm interested in. I can just use town and range descriptions to jump to that area. If you have the section number, I could use that as well. After the map view readjusts, I see a combination of both open managed forest law lands, or open MFL points, and forest crop law lands, or FCL points. I'm going to click on one of the MFL points to bring up a land description dialog box so I can read further information about land near the point that is enrolled in the tax law program. First I'm going to use the Zoom 2 tool presented in the land description dialog box to get a closer look at the land. I can use the Zoom slide tool on the upper left of the screen to continue zooming the map in or out. And I can use the click and drag of a mouse to pan the map a little to continue to adjust my map view. I'm also going to turn on the aerial photo so I have more background information. Notice in the dialog box the red banner reminding me to be as thorough as possible in my investigation of this property so I can avoid trespass situations. The first piece of information I see is that 27 acres near the point I selected are open for public recreation. The point I selected is centrally located on the public land survey quarter quarter section or what we commonly call a 40. So I might make the assumption that the entire quarter quarter section is open to me under the MFL program. But as you can see in this example that is not the case. So the web application got me this far, but I'm still missing some important information. For instance, where on the 40 is the open MFL land? How do I access the property? That's not very obvious. Are there any hazards on the property that I should be aware of, such as an active timber sale? I'd better contact a landowner, not only as a courtesy that I'll be using the property, but they can tell me where the access point is to the property and let me know if there are any hazards I should know about. As you can see, the landowner contact information is displayed to me in the land description pop-up box. If I can't get a hold of the landowner, I can also contact the local forester, indicated here. Another important piece of information in the pop-up box is the location description. Notice that part of, but not all, of the southeast quarter of the northeast quarter of section 25 is enrolled in MFL land. This is another good indicator that the entire 40 is not enrolled in open MFL. Finally, in some, but not all, of the MFL entries, an open detail section map link is available. If that link is available, I can click on it and open a map depicting the actual boundaries of the MFL land and its position within the section. As you can see in this example, the entire quarter quarter section is not enrolled in MFL land. This is great information, but remember, it won't be available for every MFL point. Also noticed on the land description dialog box, the latitude and longitude of where I clicked my mouse is shown. I can put that in my GPS unit to help me navigate. But first, I really need to get a hold of that landowner.